Hey everyone, what's up? I'm recording this back to back with the previous tutorial, so um, it does. It's pretty quick. Uh, anyways, this is going to be covering the favorites I, uh, favorites toolbar. Um, hopefully, this is uh, this is to me at least. I think it's extremely useful that your favorites bar is well organized and clean for yourself. I will. Uh, I notice I spoke very quickly in the previous tutorial, so I'll be pacing myself a lot more now. Anyways. Um, so, the favorites bar will become the go-to place to go, uh, to to go for whatever functions you need. The problem is, is that everything is segmented. Everything is in its own groups, which is good because you know you can you know what does what based on what groups. But the problem with that too is that you're gonna be constantly moving your mouse to go just click in these areas and click on the tools you want to make use of, even on the left-hand side here. So we're going to try to reduce that as much as possible from switching. We're going to reduce the amount of clicks to, to, to just one, which is to keep the favorites tool tab and on, and then that's it. Because all I ever use now is my favorites tab, this, and just file to export. Uh, you, I can do export, uh, what is it? Uh, I believe it is. No, actually, no. Yes. Yes, right here. File, you can either do file here or file here. Either way, it's two clicks. It's pretty simple. Let's get to it. So the favorites to uh, favorites tab. What's important is that when you start a scene, you're gonna have this empty matrix, which is gonna get rid of it. That's what I do. But um, what's important that is that you need to create objects. You need to create objects. You need to start somewhere. So as you can tell, my very first section here is all is all from the creates tab. So you're gonna have the empty matrix, box, sphere, rect, um, cylinder, pyramid cone, whatever. Everything is all here. Choose whichever ones you think is going to be most necessary to you. What I highly recommend is to have an empty matrix as a favorite, create box as a favorite, sphere as a favorite, cylinder as a favorite, and everything else. And oh yeah, and I'll probably also a pyramid, but everything else, it's not really that necessary. Uh, there is a create disc and create triangle, which are new tools. The create rectangle is almost useless because you have the rectangle tool and you have fun uh, shortcut functions on the pencil and uh, attach voxel tool to create a rectangle shaped object, which is, so this is just inconvenient. Um, but um, yeah, you have to create disc and create triangle. You can use that, but I barely do. Again, this is, it, this is more preferential to people, which create objects you want to do, but it's always good to have to create objects as the first. Then after that, I'm going to create a box just so you see. After that, I have all of the rotation and, and, uh, and flipping. This is extremely important because this is going to be doing very, very often just to rearrange object positions and make it feel a little bit more random and stuff like that. And uh, also mirroring. So, yes. So, yeah, pretty much flip X, flip Y, flip Z, rotate 90 degrees X, rotate 90 degrees Y, rotate 90 degrees Z. Then I did mirroring, which is, enough, uh, which is, uh, which is crucial for a lot of you if you want to make mirrored objects and uh, symmetrical objects. And then there's scale. And scale, I find it's useful for me at least, so that I can rearrange object sizes. Because I work with giant scenes, so I like a lot of with a lot of objects, and I like to scale things with por uh, proportionally, and that's very useful. And then you have the rotate tool, which is also extremely useful. So you have the 90 degrees rotation, and then you have the random degree rotation, whatever you want. That makes most sense. Uh, integer scaling, that's not necessary, but uh, yeah. so yeah, creation, rotation. And then adjustments. These are like adjustment tools, the um, optimizing work area, and then the extending the work area. Those two alone are extremely useful. And those you can find in the modify section. And the extends are there, the, the optimizing is there. Resizing, again, is unnecessary because you have the resizing tool here. So why are you gonna create two different areas for you to click? It's completely unnecessary. And then you have the divide work area, which could be useful if you make giant scenes and then you wanna split up tiles out of them. You hit the divide and you can divide it, depending on whatever axis you want, how many times you want it, that's fine. Anyways, so next in our favorites is the, you can't see them here, I'm gonna create a second object just so you can see, is the Boolean union and Boolean difference. Now this you're gonna use quite frequently. So in, you're gonna see in future tutorials, I'm gonna explain how you, you, like, you can model parts of objects and then put them together and then it's like, okay, now let's actually fuse it because we're done editing this. And it's like, okay, fuse with Boolean union. There, done. So that's going to be very frequent, at least with my, uh, the way I, I'll be teaching you guys, uh, you're going to be using the Boolean union quite frequently, which is extremely useful. And then there's hollowing 
fill hollow, and extract core. Those are you can find as well in the modify section. So mostly you're going to be in create, then transform, then modify. Everything else is you're not going to really go through. So yeah, these are the three sections you're going to find most tools you'll need. And uh, yeah, after that, I like to finish off generally with the coloring stuff. Uh, hue, uh, hue, saturation, and brightness and contrast. These are what you will use frequently, and I mean like frequently, for color adjustments and just small tweaks when finishing up a model, when you're doing, when you're doing your touch-ups. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend those. One I, the one I don't recommend using much, I think it's, yeah, it's here, is the add noise. The noise, you can add the noise function to your favorites if you want, but I recommend avoiding the add noise. It's, um, all it does is make your models look um, dangerously messy and the textures have huge color counts and it's completely, un completely unnecessary. And uh, for those of you in Magic of Voxel, keep in mind that uh, who want to transfer objects to Magic of Voxel, keep in mind that the noise tool will screw you over big time. Because Magic of Voxel, the dot vox format that Magic of Voxel uses, which is slab six, if I'm not mistaken, is um, limited to 256 colors. And because of that, the moment you do the add noise, the add noise does a range of colors. It does, okay, you want this one color, or you want this one thing, let's do a range of 25 different colors within that and apply it and then mix it up. So there's 20, if you're not, it doesn't look like it, but there's 25 different colors in here right now. Like if I were to use magic wand tool, you can see there's 25 different, like there's a bunch of different colors and that is the most inefficient method to, to working because it'll just confuse you. It'll make something look messy. And uh, yeah, so avoid, please avoid add noise. Um, and you can add sepia if you want. I don't because sepia only does like it does one simple thing. It, it it's, it's like might as well do the hue saturation and then adjust the hue to be more of a sepia hue. It does it doesn't really matter, but uh, you can do sepia if you want as well. That's just a thing. So anyways, so that's the favorites tab. Once you have your favorites tab, you're good to go. It's generally the first thing I recommend you do when working in Cubicle. Like after you've done my tutorial and understanding the tools like by making very simple objects. You can go ahead and make your favorites tab, figure out what tools are actually useful to you and make lay it out. I, another tool I use is the show and hide, which you'll find in the edit uh, section, which is right here, show and hide. It does also lock and unlock, but uh, those are, I can explain for uh, advanced features. But show and hide are good for, if you wanna work with uh, like multiple objects, uh, tools, like multiple objects, and it's like, okay, I don't, wanna, I don't need to see all of this. I'm gonna select U3 and then hide it, and you're good. And it's like, okay, cool. It's not in the way. When I go in ghost mode, I only see, when I go in matrix and I have ghost mode on, I only see these ones, which I want to correlate, but I don't want these ones to, to, to do so. So yeah, you're good. So hopefully this helps. Um, again, use the tools as much as you want. Mess around with tools a lot, just so you understand them and which ones you think will be useful to you. But uh, try to be as, um, try not to be as redundant as possible. I, I just realize I'm, I'm redundant myself, but no, these aren't what they are. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully this helped you guys out and just understanding the favorites uh, favorite section and how we can ease your, your workflow. And uh, I hope to see you guys later. Again, I'll be releasing another tutorial regarding how to, how to use Magical Voxel and Cubicle in unison to your advantage. And uh, there's going to be more tutorials to come. But thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, leave a comment if you, wanna, if you want me to explain something else in more depth because I am happy to do so. And uh, yes, that will be it. So have a good one. And uh, yeah, bye.